Hey, what's up? You're watching the sixth part in a series about building out a short-term vacation rental marketplace. In a previous part here, I got a great comment from ST Packet. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, I'm so sorry, about some best practices around using enums. I was kind of a little bit flippant in a previous episode. I just threw them in as an array where we would use the value in, or the index in the array as the value for the enum. And, um, and then the, the value in the array at that index as the, uh, as the value. And so they were suggesting instead of using the array style, we should use the object style where you can explicitly specify the underlying value for the enum. Um, and then also specifying the default value for the enum in the model instead of in the migration. I'm a little bit torn between the two. One of them makes it so that you don't have to run a migration when you're changing the default value for the enum. I tend to prefer having the default in the database. I try to build like quite a bit of defaults into the database because I often expect that as something grows, you might be interacting with the database from other systems. So Rails might not be the one and only thing that you interact with all the time. So that's kind of where my head is at when I'm adding those defaults and like foreign keys and things at, at, the, at the database level. Um, but this was a super good tip. And so I wanted to jump in real quick and talk about this. So over in the listing, here we had an enum with status of draft, published, and archived. And so instead what we can do is we can put these at the end um, uh, and uh, two, and then we change this from an array into an object. That's a little bit better or like a, a little bit better of a, um, a practice. So we're gonna use another enum in today's episode, but first I wanted to talk a little bit more about what we're gonna actually build. So in this episode, we're gonna build out some nested forms for adding rooms to our listings. And if we talk about, if we go back and look at our uh, our listing objects here, we've we've kind of covered some of the high level components that are attached direct, directly to the listing, um, but we wanna go back and add in some rooms. So the way that we're gonna do that is by creating another model called a listing room. So let's take a look at what this database structure might look like. So I've got, here we have a listing table and inside of our listing table, it has an ID and then it has a bunch of these other properties like the address, right? And what we wanna add now is some concept of a room. So a listing can have many rooms. So we're gonna have a room model and that's gonna have an ID. And a room is gonna have a type. Um, I'm gonna call this something other than type because type and class and kind all end up having like loaded meanings in terms of programming. So instead of type, I'm gonna call it room type but this will be something like bedroom versus primary bedroom versus living room versus guest room versus whatever. Then also in each room, we're gonna have beds and each bed can also similarly have a type. In this case, we're gonna call it the size. So this is like, is it a twin bed? Is it a king bed? Is it a whatever bed? And then I think I might also have some sort of other indicator of whether or not it's like, an air mattress or something, or a couch, like, um, yeah, not, not exactly sure. We can probably add that in later. So let's just stick with size for now, type on room. And so a single listing will have many rooms. So one listing will have many rooms and one room will have many beds. So what we wanna do today is I'm gonna build out a form that just handles this section here. So the form is going to be just for creating rooms on the listing. So we're going to have a separate form, a separate view, but because we're going to be creating rooms that have many beds, we're going to be able to talk about nested forms. So it's going to be, um, yeah, that's kind of where we're headed today in terms of the database layer. And uh, yeah, so let's jump into it and take a look. All right, so back over in our application, we wanna generate models for the room, Rails G model room, and this is gonna um, belong directly to the listing. And we also wanna create the room type, which is gonna be another enum, which we're gonna store in the database as an integer. So we're gonna create that room 
uh, that new room model, we're also gonna generate a new model for a bed. And this is gonna be related directly to a room. So room references, and here we're gonna have a bed size, which will also be an integer that's um, in the database, we'll store as an integer, and we'll store that, or we'll use that as an enum. Rails DB migrate to create all of those um, database fields. All right, so now that our database is migrated, we've got rooms created and we've got beds created. Let's go take a look at those models. So the room model here belongs to a listing and has many beds. And we wanna make this dependent destroy so that if a bed is destroyed, or so that if a room is destroyed, its related beds are also destroyed. So um, the room again also has this enum value for uh, room type. And again, we'll follow this, this best practice here. And there's actually a bunch of different rooms. So let's look this up, room. Uh, well, no, we'll just, we'll just stick with like um, bedroom. That'll be primary case, primary bedroom is one. And then maybe like um, living room is two, basement, I don't know, three. I'm sure there's other room types that people will request eventually, but we can start with that as our room types. Let's go over to the bed. So this is gonna have an enum for the um, bed size. And this is gonna have something like twin, um, twin XL. Uh, we're gonna have full, we'll have queen, uh, king. And there's a special kind of king called the California uh, California King, which is a little bit bigger than a normal King or longer or something like they're different in some way. Um, and then a bed belongs to a room has all this stuff. Okay. So the model is pretty close, but what's going to happen is as we're creating the room, um, we want to also create all of the related beds at the same time. So the crux of building out a nested form is really being able to pass in the same data when you're creating the top level resource and some special attributes to create the nested resource. So let's take a look at how that actually works. So here, if we were to go in and just say like, um, give me the most recent listing. Um, and then we wanna say like l.rooms, oh actually we don't have that created yet. So let's go to listing and say a listing has many rooms. Okay. Um, and then we'll reload this L equals listing dot last L dot L dot rooms. Okay. So the rooms are empty right now for the listing. So if we say, um, like R is room dot create for listing of L, then at this point we can't really pass. Well, we could technically pass in like beds and then like a, an array of new bed objects where we say like bed dot create, um, like bed size twin or something, right? And so this means that we would be able to um, insert into rooms and insert into beds. Okay, so if we have the listing object and we have bed objects, we can put those into uh, an array and pass that as an argument into beds. That will set the beds, um, the beds, association value equal to this array and that will set up all of the, re the related associations. Um, this room didn't have a type so we ended up with a room type of nil but now if we look at like r.beds we will see that it has indeed this one bed and that bed has an id. But when you think about the data that's coming in from the client when it's coming in from the form that's being posted to your Rails server the data is not going to be an instance of a bed object, right? And so what we're probably going to get is some like array of arrays. And so ideally we want to be able to say something like this, where we can, instead of just passing in beds, we want to pass in beds attributes. And that will be like an array of objects where we can say bed size is uh, twin. And it might actually be like this. Um, sort of string values, right? Uh, and where am, am I missing? Yeah, so unknown attribute beds attributes for room. So this is a special Rails thing that we're gonna add into the room model. So we're gonna go back over to the room model and we're gonna say accepts nested attributes for 
beds, okay? So this accepts nested attributes four is gonna do this special thing where when we reload and again, get access to our listing. Now, when we attempt to create this, beds attributes will be a setter method on instances of room that will accept in arrays of hashes that will be used as arguments to create related beds. So now we're inserting into beds the same way as we were before, but instead of having to like construct all of these child or like leaf node objects, we can pass them through as beds attributes. So this is, um, this is kind of like the model layer crux to getting nested forms set up. And now that we have that in place, we can go talk about our controller action and get all of those pieces set up. So again, I want to have a rooms slash or like a listings form or we want a form or some sort of UI for adding rooms to a listing. And that's going to be separate from the form for managing the top level attributes of the listing. We're going to keep them separate just to keep things a little bit simpler, but we'll still get to see these nested forms things. So we're going to generate a new controller under the host namespace, and we're going to call it the rooms controller. And it's going to have an index and we'll keep it at that for now. All right, so that's gonna generate this new rooms controller. Let's open up the uh, routes file here. And instead of having that there, we're gonna say resources listings do uh, resources uh, rooms only, we only want um, index, create and destroy. Uh, and I think this should work. So what this will do is create three new routes nested under listings. So this will give us a route that's something like host, because we have the namespace of host, slash listings, underneath listings. And then because we're using this resources room situation, this will have the listing ID. And in fact, this is gonna be a dynamic segment of the path, and it'll be called listing underscore ID, and then we'll have like slash rooms. So this will go to the index path, sending a post will, will go to the create path, sending a destroy to like slash room slash two or something will go to um, to the destroy path. In practice, you don't actually need to nest the destroy path under listings because if you have the ID of the room, you don't need the ID of the listing, but whatever. It's uh, something you'll just have to consider in, in the structure of how you're setting stuff up. All right, so now that we've got the route set up, let's go look at our controller. So host rooms controller and in the index, we wanna first grab the listing. So because this controller is gonna be working as a nested controller or a controller for resources that are nested under listings, we can grab that listing in every single controller action. So we can say current user.listings.find params listing ID. That's gonna give us the instance of the listing. And we want to add a before action re or like authenticate user. Okay, and then we're gonna say room is gonna be, well, actually no. So that's the listing. And then rooms is gonna be like the list of things we wanna show in this index, right? So at listing.rooms.all. And we'll go to the room index view here. And this will be like uh, rooms. And because we're using Tailwind now, we can say something like text 3XL or something. I don't know, I'm still like very much learning, um, learning Tailwind. Okay, and then let's go to Tailwind UI and just try to grab a couple components here um, to make this look not horrible. So I'm thinking we might want some sort of grid list situation. And yeah, I don't actually know. I don't know, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> uh, okay, so then for each room, so at rooms.each do uh, room, we want to print something out on this grid and we'll have to kind of like munge this a little bit to make it look some somewhat, I don't know, good. I don't know. We'll see. So for now we'll print out the room dot room type. And then maybe we'll say like, um, we'll have a P tag that just says, Oh gosh. Oh, instead of admin, why don't we say like, um, we print out the room dot beds dot count or something. So the number of beds, and then we can iterate over room.beds.each do bed. And then for each bed, we'll just print out its uh, bed size here. Bed.bed size. 
Okay, so um, let's take it for a spin. We need to start the server and we need to start Webpack dev server. Okay, so if we go to localhost 3000 and open this up, all right, we should be able to go to host listings slash four, five, okay, and then slash rooms. And here we have our rooms. Right now, nothing is showing because we haven't actually created any rooms for this listing. Um, so we will have to come back and mess around with this. Um, we'll come back and mess around with this in a little bit. But what I wanna do now is, in the same index page, I'm going to just add a way that you can add rooms to the listing. Um, so we're gonna embed the form directly on the index page. And I think we'll just put it at the bottom for now. So I'm gonna say render partial, uh, we're gonna render a form partial and we wanna pass in the listing. And I think that should be good. So we're gonna add a new view here called a form.html.erb. And this will just be the form for creating a new room. So the, the action here is gonna be um, host listing rooms path for at listing or listing. And this is gonna say add room. And we're gonna want a select box or some sort of select dropdown. I'm sure Tailwind has one of these bad boys. So let's see. So if we go to the forms, there's select menus. We'll just grab the code for this one. Sure, that looks legit. Drop it in. Okay, so label for um, room type. And the name is gonna be um, room, room type. And this is gonna say room type. And that's all CSS stuff. Okay, so then for the options, what we wanna do is we wanna iterate over the enum of room types. So we actually have access to that here from like room.roomtypes.each do. And then the first thing is gonna be, um, so we're iterating over a hash. So the first thing is gonna be like the string value. So the room type string value. And the second thing is gonna be the number, which we don't really care about in this case. Um, so we can just print the room type, room type and in practice, we should probably come back and like localize this and make it look all super pro. But now at least we've got some rough thing that looks sort of like a form. We've got a drop down list that's using the enum values that are from the room. So if we go back to the room model real quick, these room types here in this enum are available as like a class method on room. So we can access all of these goodies. And then if we click add room, this should send a post request. So we can just confirm this by looking at the forms action method. So it's gonna send a post request to host listings fives slash rooms. And because of the way that our routes are set up, this should post a, um, a hash where there's a key of room. And then that has a value that is a nested hash with room type pointing at the value of whatever is selected in the dropdown list. So if we just said like a bedroom or something and said add room, there's no create action on the rooms controller. So let's go add that. So here we can add a new um, create action. Um, and then I think these are gonna be actually pretty similar. So listing.rooms.new room params. If we didn't save the room, then we want to set flash uh, errors equal to at room.errors.full messages. Otherwise, or like in every case, we want to redirect to the um, host listing rooms path for at listing. So we're just going to kind of like redirect back to that same index view. So we need to define um, this uh, room params and we're going to say params. Um, params.require room.permit um, room type. So this is all standard CRUD stuff so far, right? Refresh the page. Okay, so we created a bedroom, awesome. Now we see that as a room. If we create now a living room, say add room, now we have a living room. So now this, this, uh, this listing has two rooms. It has a bedroom and it has a living room. We could also add a primary bedroom. And now we have like three different rooms here. So that's all 
working fine. Now, this is where it gets a little gnarly because we want to break into in or like we want to insert some beds into this form. And so the way we're going to do that is using a little bit of stimulus JS so that we can add like a link that says something like add bed, add bed, add bed. And when we add the bed, we want to be able to select the size of the bed. So is it a king, queen, twin, whatever. So uh, I think we want to say Rails G stimulus um, room, pretty sure. And that should create like a room controller and then rebuild the manifest. Okay, so this added this new room controller thing. So if we open this up, this is gonna connect to something that has the data dash controller attribute on it. So I think what we wanna do is go to our room form and at the top here, add a div with data controller room. That way we can uh, attach the stimul stimulus controller to this entire div. And then inside of the div, we wanna create a template. And the template is gonna be what the fields are for creating a bed. So we're gonna say template, and this is gonna have data room target of bed template, I think. Bed template, okay. And inside of the template, we just need the fields for creating a single bed, which right now I think is actually really similar to this thing. So um, instead of bed or instead of room, it's bed and bed sizes, bed sizes. And this is like um, bed size. I don't know why I did RT down there, bed size, whatever. It's room, it was room type. Okay, so this is bed size. Oh gosh, okay, so the other thing is that like, uh, yeah, in order to wire up the label correctly, because we might have multiple bed, we might have multiple of these controls in our form below, we will want our labels to have some sort of um, index or something. Oh gosh, how do we wanna do that? So let's just say bed size here and um, you know what I am not going to worry about it for now we'll just uh, we'll just remove that for now and our label will not be clickable it's bad um, <laughs> it's bad for uh, accessibility but um, we'll take the shortcut for now just to get the nested form set up and then we'll come back and um, review it in a second so the um, this is another crux of the nested form situation we need to pass room and inside of room, we're gonna pass bed at our beds attributes. So this needs to be plural beds. That's like this part that's before underscore attributes and matches the name of what we said has nested attributes for. And usually that's the name of the association. So beds attributes. So that's gonna be like pointing at something and that something is an array. And so what we're gonna do is just leave the square brackets with nothing inside of them saying that it's an array. Then we need another set of square brackets saying that like, what is now the key value for an object in that array? And so in this case, this will be like bed size. So this, this is like actually forming this name is where it can get a little tricky when you're working with nested forms. Um, also somehow I got an extra A in here, whatever. All right, so we've got our bed attributes. We've got our controller set up as the room controller. Now we added this data room target by adding this, um, this data dash attribute, we'll be able to use stimulus JS to grab the bed template. So let's actually go back to our, um, bit, our room controller and say, um, static targets is equal to this array of like bed template. Okay, and then we're gonna say, we're, we need a method like add bed. Um, and here we'll just like console.log this.bed template target. And that should give us access to, the, to that target that has the, the bed fields template. In fact, let's call it bed fields. Um, that, that sounds a little bit nicer, bed fields. Uh, okay, so this end up, ends up being called bed fields, okay. All right, now 
let's see how this feels. Oh, right. Okay, so we won't even we won't even be able to use this template until we actually have some button or something that will add it to some place. So for now, I'm just going to add an, um, a link that will point at nothing, and we're going to have data uh, action, and the action is going to be um, using the room controllers add bed method. That's what we want to happen when this thing is clicked. So we're going to say add bed. And now we should have this new link here for adding a bed. Okay, so now if we click on add bed, you see this is logged out to the console. So if I put a breakpoint on line 13, refresh the page, click on add bed, you can see that we're lo console.logging um, bed fields target. So this.bed fields uh, target dot inner HTML gives us back all of the HTML that's inside of that template tag. So that's giving us back like this, this form control basically. What we want to do is then take that and inject it into our form here. So what I'm thinking is we want to create some sort of div or something that has a data room target of like beds and inside of this div is where we want to drop in all of those form controls. There's probably a better way to do this using field sets or something like that, maybe. Um, but yeah, actually, let's let's take a look. So, HTML field sets tag. Uh, okay. All right, field set legend. Um, let's try this out. So, field set, field set, and then we can say legend is like beds or something. I don't know. We'll see how that looks. Um, but the idea is that we want now to add another target beds and the, uh, hopefully we can say something like this dot beds target dot, um, oh gosh, adjacent insert adjacent HTML. <laughs> How does this work? JavaScript insert adjacent HTML. Uh, yes. Okay. This is the one that we want insert adjacent HTML, then we give it a position, and then we give it the text. So we want to call insert adjacent HTML. And where do we want this to go? We want the HTML to go like right before the end. So we're going to pass it this, this is like the position. And then we need to give it the HTML that we actually want to add. So this dot bed fields target dot inner HTML. And who knows, maybe this will work, maybe it will just fail miserably, <laughs> miserably. we'll see. So if we say add bed, um, I guess we can check and see if that's actually gonna work. I don't know why it's like scrolling back up. Um, uh, ooh, I think we might need to prevent default. Um, I think we get the event here, I'm not sure. E.prevent default, because we don't actually want it to navigate. Like it is adding this, um, the Octothorpe to the path. So add beds, there we go. Okay, so add bed. So now we have two beds. We can pick queen and king, right? And then if we inspect, if we inspect both of these, we will see that we have room, beds, attributes, square bracket, bed size, and that the value is gonna be whatever we selected as the option, the selected option. And so when we click add room, this is gonna send all of that data back to the server. And we see that a bedroom, a new bedroom was created, but it looks like it has zero beds. There is a, one more piece that we need to add to the server, but I wanna just show you in the server log, the post request that came in. Um, take a look at the shape of this, this puppy. Take a look at this bad boy that came in. All right, so we've got the room, the room type is bedroom, and then we have beds attributes. And this beds attributes, has a an array, it's taking in an array of bed size queen, bed size king. So this is exactly what we want, but we need to permit it. So you can see down here, unpermitted parameter beds attributes. So we've got to go back into our beds control, our rooms controller, back to our room params and say beds attributes. Now what's weird is we can't just say like, we don't want to just say beds attributes except beds attributes because in this case, because it's nested, we actually have to have beds attributes points at and then an array. And um, in fact, the array must contain all of the nested attributes so that we don't have uh, like an attribute 
um, security issue with what's being passed in when creating beds. So here we want to say uh, bed size. Hopefully this works. It should work, I think. All right, so let's say this is going to be a, um, a basement and the basement is going to have a twin XL. Maybe it'll have two twin XLs and it will have a California King. We'll say add room. Boom, look at this. Now we have a basement which has three beds, two twin XLs and a California King. So eventually what I'd love to do is come in here and make a little UI that shows kind of like small bed, small bed, and then like humongous bed for the California King. That's kind of the idea for sort of the, the view uh, or like what it might look like. Um, but in practice, at least we're getting uh, quite a bit of stuff that we can see for rooms. We were able to build out a nested form for rooms. I guess the one other thing we need is the, the ability to delete a room, right? We want to be able to destroy it. In fact, in a, yeah, okay, so let's, um, let's go back to our uh, rooms index here. And as we're iterating over each room, maybe we can add a button, um, button to delete or something. And this is going to go to host listing room path. And in this case, we have to pass in the listing and the room. And I think we also need to say method delete or something. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So now they all have a delete button. Does that work? Okay. The destroy action cannot be found on the host rooms controller rooms controller. Let's add a destroy method and we will try to um, find um, the listing and then we want to find the room. And then we want to destroy the room at room.destroy and then redirect to host listing rooms path for at listing. Hopefully this works. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, cool. Boom. Boom. Nice. So that's totally working. And right now we don't have a way to edit a room, but I think, I think that's all right. Um, we can just assume that people are going to, if they want to like change up the room, they can just delete it and then re add it. Uh, whatever, like not, not a huge deal. All right. So this listing now has two rooms, a basement and a bedroom, and it has four beds. And I think that's all we're going to cover in this episode about nested forms. Hopefully that was useful. Thanks so much for sticking around and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.